Una, how do you handle um, grief? Can you get stuck in grief at times? Absolutely. But remember, grief is the price you pay for the love you had for the person. And the deeper the love, the deeper the pain. There are as many, there are a few stages in grief. And this is crucial. First is to accept the reality of the loss. But however, before you go there, there's two types of death. There's the sudden and the prolonged. In the sudden, in the sudden, you, it's over. It's like a, as if a steamroller went over you. But in the prolonged, we have such a thing as anticipatory grief. So, in the prolonged, you say, well, he or she could die. But you're hoping against hope, but you had an awareness that they were very ill. That's the massive difference. In the sudden, it's like a steamroller went over you. In the prolonged, you had what we call anticipatory grief. But also, in there is how, how the person died and how coping mechanism comes into full play. If I'm the type of person who denies reality, I wouldn't want to let the pain in. And you could be working with somebody and you have to make sure that you're getting in to where they're at. Because some say, ah, oh, well, we had a good life or, you know, I didn't want her to suffer. You had a relationship and that's what you pay for. That's the price. And you must be very acutely uh, aware of that. And you know, if there's trauma associated with that, and by that I mean, you know, maybe the person was in the hole of the head and just dropped dead. That's severe trauma. And maybe there was organ donation and everything was whirlwind. It's being acutely aware of that when you work with people. Because that the trauma has to be dealt with first. Or, you know, to avoid pain, we might blame. Blame myself or blame others or blame the person who died and said the person should have looked after themselves. So that's all a game to keep me away from the pain. So grief only starts when you're ready. But you must be very astute when you're doing grief work that you provide the space and you're attuned to the inner workings of the person and the emotions that's going on so that you won't hurry them to where you think they should be at. You pace your work with them according to themselves. So when all the tricks that they tried to say the person didn't die or they blamed that, when all that wears down, you start your grief work. First is to accept the reality of the loss. You must name it. And you tease it out, but you must name it. Remember, the facts of the story is the person died, but you'll never get stuck in facts. It's the feelings and emotions that's behind that. So the first is to accept the reality. Second is to allow ourselves to follow the feelings. That's the longest and largest part in that. Because you're dealing with the emotions and they'll go backwards and forwards in that. That's, you know, it's, it's massive. They'll be in intense pain and they'll have intense tears. And they'll be trying to rewrite history in it. And you have to watch that, that there's not blaming in it. Because remember, there's never a right time to die. And we can't stop death. It's part of the human condition. But that's the longest, longest part. Third is to adjust to life without the loved one. That's taking on different roles. If you have a young family, he or she did their part of that. Now you have the full load. And that can be very traumatic for a husband left on his own or for a wife left on her own that small kids. 
The kids want to enjoy life and get on with it. They'll miss Daddy or Miss Mammy. But there's a significant other there for them. So they'll manage. And that's why I say to the, the survivor, either the father or mother in this loss, I say, you need the help because you're giving to the children. And sometimes their feelings of the survivor might be very raw and the kids might be laughing. And you could turn around and not want to do it, but you might shout at them because you are raw. So that's why it's so important for you to get the help you need. So it's adjusting to many roles. And it may, I mean, you know, you go to bed tired and you get up tired. It's, it's, it's a hard road ahead. Fourth is to reinvest in life and living. Gradually, and I mean gradually, the energy returns, but it's over a long spell. One woman said to me, she said, Una, does this make sense? I had my first belly laugh, and this was four years later. I said, exactly. And then she said, I felt guilty because he wasn't there to enjoy it. I said, that's part of the grief. They used to stop there, but that moved on and they said, fifth is to be healed to the level where you, where you miss the person, but it doesn't have that gripping feeling. But you always, always miss your loved one. Photo shoots, a wedding, um, a baptism, a, gra a son graduation for a college or a daughter. So that person is absent from the photo. So there are as many losses, but the loss of a loved one is what we're dealing with here. May you find the comfort and support in sharing your story with somebody who has the capacity to contain it and metaphorically hold you to the level where you are felt heard, supported in a meaningful way and feel as you leave that space, yeah, I can get on with life because I know I can count on that person. The God of creation is supporting you in it all. And your loved one who's gone before you is gone no farther than, than whatever you believe in. For me, it's God. And they're there with you spiritually. Physical presence is gone, and that's what we're missing. But I can guarantee you, they are there with you spiritually. <laughs>